You wouldn't think the new Viper needs to be lighter, but it is. You wouldn't think it needs more horsepower, but it has. The new Viper then, with its 8.4 liter V10, 355 section rear tires, and comic book styling, is much like the old Viper. Imposing, intimidating, and all powerful. Not much has changed from the inside either. I mean, sure, we have this fancy new infotainment system, we have digital graphics, we have leather wrapped everything as this is the high-end GTS model. And the typical Viper traits remain. The pedals are angled left of the steering wheel. The brake is actually left of the steering wheel. So your feet are angled towards the driver's side. Uh, it's rough, it's loud, it's hard to see out of, and so on and so on. And that engine sound, Sure, we have 640 horsepower, but that is probably the worst sounding 640 horsepower ever. Now, some say the Viper is uncompromising, others just might call it miserable. This car is very much like the old Viper at slow speeds, but SRT never said it was going to be anything different. What they've said is that this car's limits are easier to approach. Let's find them. Now for acceleration, we have more power, the car overall is lighter, we have shorter gearing so we'll hit 60 miles an hour in first gear, and we also have launch control which you access by hitting this button on the steering wheel here. In our testing we found launch control was actually kind of useless on anything but a prepped drag strip as it releases the clutch at about 5,000 RPM and basically just makes a big smoke show. Uh, because we're not on a prep surface, we'll launch at somewhere around 2,000 RPM, release the clutch and see what happens. And chatter through first. You'll hit 60, 3.4 seconds. This thing is really fast. <laughs> and the quarter mile at 11.4 seconds at 128.7 miles an hour. This thing's really fast. <laughs> And now for our 60 to 0 braking test. It takes the Viper just 93 feet to stop from 60. And now the figure 8 in the SRT Viper. You know this car is stepping it up a notch. Limits are very high. Power is very high as well. This thing is very fast, hugely capable, and very, very intimidating. I'm finding though it's surprisingly well balanced for how intimidating it seems to be. I feel like I have good control through the steering and the throttle. It behaves in a way that you would expect. It's still intimidating, but controllable perhaps. The brake feel is interesting because it's definitely stopping the car, but it doesn't feel comforting. You know you're slowing down, but you never feel like you're going to make it in time. So it takes an extra bit of thought. The power is absolutely huge, and the grip is incredible. When the tail end goes though, it goes very quick, and I'm finding that it can be easy to work these front tires. There's actually a little bit more understeer than I would suspect in this car, but in this car, I'd actually like understeer. The thing is about this Viper, for how huff and gruff and uncomfortable it is at low speeds, how much it doesn't seem to like its driver, once you start throwing it around, once you start approaching the limits, you feel like, yeah, you might be able to control it. It's a little bit rewarding, maybe. 
Much of that we can attribute to the work that SRT has done on the suspension, putting the X brace over the engine. They've made this car much more improved over the previous Viper. It's still a Viper though, it's still flippin' hairy. It takes a lot of work to drive this car quickly, but there's still something lovable about it. When you feel like you can control it, or at least you have some sense of control, it actually might begin to be a little bit fun. It might not be my preference for a car, but I might understand why people enjoy it. What SRT's done here is actually pretty admirable. They haven't diluted the things that make a Viper a Viper. It's still sketchy, it's still intimidating, but at the same time, it's a much better driving car. It doesn't have the finesse of some European sports cars. It's still very brutish and very much a knuckle dragger, but it is a lot better and I'm happy for that. And there's some interesting little surprises throughout the car. The steering, for example, you know, it doesn't telescope. You kind of have to adjust your body around it, but it's nicely weighted. It's easy to control. It makes the car predictable, maybe, perhaps. Not quite. Let's take that back. Not predictable at all. This car is still sketchy. Still sketchy, yeah. One of my favorite details though about this car is that its overall length is actually shorter than that of a new 911. This car is smaller than you may think. This is still a very ridiculous car, but it's a ridiculous car with more approachable limits, which is nice. I wonder what racing car driver Randy Popes might say about it. up the front straightaway in the Dodge Viper. Brand new car at the red line. I've got a Viper looking right at me telling me to shift. The higher you rev this Viper, the faster it goes. It's a high RPM engine. It's not a torque monster. Down into turn two, we turn in tremendous steering response. A quick steering response, definitely on entry. Ton of power as we head for three. Again, a little snappy on the entry. A difficult car to drive fast, I just got to say it. It is fun and satisfying, but you better be on your game if you're going to go fast in the Viper. So here we are, 5,000, 6,000. It just gets faster and faster. Less brake dive than the Corvette I just drove, but not as much grip. The brakes are good. They're not fantastic. It's not a Porsche in the brake zone. But boy, does it have the power off the line. God bless America. Horsepower, climbing the hill, out of turn six. The Viper has adjustable suspension, really tightens it up for the track, helps it put power down. But the ride is terrible, but who cares on the racetrack? Over the corkscrew, put the power down in second gear. It accelerates so fast, I barely even get to third before the turn eight downhill sweeper. We're bouncing a lot through the bumps. I didn't know there were bumps in turn eight. The Viper, very stiff car in the race mode, but it puts down power better. Into the hairpin at the end. We turn in, rotate the car, power down, a little power oversteer. Ripping towards the finish line. The seat is not the most comfortable I've tried. The whole car is not about comfort, it's about an exciting, kind of crazy, huge driving experience that has to be tasted to be understood. It's a wild car, a lot of fun. The new Viper then doesn't portray the things that made it so iconic or feared. But it is improved over the previous car, offering just a hint of controllability. It remains then a rowdy car, a knuckle dragger, if ever so slightly a more accessible one. And it creates this allure that's hard to place. The Viper is an awful street car after all, but when you're approaching the limit, you get the sense that you're reaching for a reward, even if it's always just slightly out of reach.
So with that, we end the first year of our official Motor Trend YouTube channel. The team and I want to thank you guys for your reviews and your comments and your feedback. We hope you've enjoyed watching this stuff as much as we've enjoyed making it. We're going to take the next few weeks off for the holidays, but don't worry, there's going to be a best of episode airing December 31st, showing the highlights from everything we've done in the past year. We're going to resume normal programming on January 7th with some new shows and some lineup changes happening later in the new year. Until then, we hope you and your families have a safe and happy holidays, and we look forward to seeing you next year. Why did you drink 32 ounces of horchata? Drink, I didn't drink all of it. I drank, how, many, how many ounces of horchata did you drink? Oh, somewhere between 20 and 25. So, Levi, <laughs> what today you're thinking, hmm, I got to sit passenger in a 640 horsepower Viper. Know, I'm going to drink 25 ounces of horchata today before I was, that. Today I was also thinking, I'm, I love horchata. Well, horchata is delicious, but I mean, did you think beyond that? Obviously didn't, Carlos. <laughs>